in this video, you're going to learn about the notation of sequences. Uh, you're also going to see arithmetic sequences and how to identify them. You're going to see what the formula is for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And then we're going to do two examples. Let's get started. This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. So let's talk about arithmetic sequences. So a sequence, like this one, is just a string of numbers all separated by commas. So basically it's a set of numbers. And when you're looking at this set of numbers, uh, and uh, you're looking at the notation and trying to figure out, well, how does the notation work? Well, we call the first term a sub 1, the second term a sub 2, third term a sub 3, and so on until we get up to the nth term. The nth term is, of course, the general term. It stands for any term in the sequence of numbers. That's all there is to it. So you can clearly see that there are three sequences of numbers there, so three separate lists of numbers. And what we'd like to do is determine which of them, if any, are arithmetic. So when you look at the first sequence of numbers, you could see that Let's see, three plus four, right? If I add four, I get seven. If I add four to seven, I get 11. If I add four to 11, I get 15. So it seems like these numbers are all glued together by this addition by four. It seems common, it doesn't matter where I am, but all I have to do is add four to go from one number to the next. All right, now let's take a look at the next uh, sequence of numbers. So let's try the same thing. If I take negative 2 and I add 3, okay, so if I put an addition by 3, I'm going to get 1. If I take 1 and add 3, I get 4. I don't get 5. If I take 5 and I add 3, no, it doesn't work. See, it, it actually looks like I'm adding 3, then I'm adding 4, then I'm adding 5. So there is no common sum for this one. Okay, so the first one demonstrates an arithmetic because there's a common sum that glues all the numbers together. Here there's no common sum. The sum keeps changing. It's a pretty regular pattern, add 3, add 4, add 5, but it, that's not an arithmetic sequence. Now let's get to the next one. So if I take 2 and I add 2, I get 4. But if I add 2 again, oh, I don't get 8. See, this one has a different pattern. It looks like I'm multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2. So when you multiply that something else, it's geometric, okay, but it's not arithmetic. So the first one is the only arithmetic sequence. So here's an arithmetic sequence. We could see that we have some symbols here. Let's talk about them. So uh, a sub n, that just uh, means the nth term whatever term you're looking to find, the 5th, 10th, the 20th, the 7,000th term. N, of course, stands for whatever term number it is. And there you go, you can see N there again. Uh, A sub 1 is, of course, the first term, and D is the common difference. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, let's take a look at that uh, sequence of numbers that we were looking at earlier. We got the 3, 7, 11, and the 15. So, if you were to figure out what is the glue that holds all those numbers together, Earlier we found out it was 4, right? Because it took adding 4 to go from one term to the next. That's called the common difference. That's the d value in the formula. Okay, like for instance, if you wanted to find the second term, yeah, I know, we already know the second term. But what would you do? You would say, I want to look for the second term. So you put the first term, hey, the first term is 3. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to take, if you want the second term, n is 2. And we already said that the common difference was 4. So if you did just a little bit of work, and you could see that this is really not too much work to do, you could see this is 3 plus 4 times 1, and you get 7. And we already knew that 7 was that term. Okay, well, let's try this again. Let me get this out of here. So let's use the same kind of thinking. 
So let's say we wanted to find the fourth term. Yeah, I, I know, we already know the fourth term. But you would take the first term. And since I want to find the fourth term, n is four, and the common difference is still four. And we could see the fourth term is gonna be three plus three times four. Okay, so we know that that's three plus 12 or 15. See, that's the fourth term. Pretty neat, huh? So let's do a problem. In this particular problem, we're going to find the 801st term of this arithmetic sequence. Now, we know this is arithmetic because we saw the sequence a moment ago. We know the common difference is four because that's what it takes to add to go from one term to the next. So, if I want to find the 801st term, I'm going to take the first term. I'm going to replace n with 801. And we already know the common difference is four. So you could throw this all into a calculator, or you could see the math is fairly simple. Eight times four is 3,200. And when we add that together, we get 3,203. So we know that the 801st term is equal to 3,203. Here's our second example. And you can see that we have the sequence up here. Well, first of all, is it arithmetic? Well, let's see, I've got to add two to go from negative seven to negative five. If I add two, I get negative three. If I add two again, I get negative one. So yes, this is arithmetic. It looks like the common difference is two. All right, so how do we find the 210th term? Well, I'm going to put the notation properly, just like that. I take the first term, that's negative seven. I'm gonna add one less than the term number just going to throw it in the formula. And here we said that we were adding two. There's our common difference of two. So it really means we're going to take 209 times two. So let's see, what would that be? That would be 418. 418 plus negative seven is 411. And there you go. That's how we find any particular term which we call the nth term. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com. We literally have hundreds of lessons, quizzes, and videos. Take care.